Well, good morning, everyone. Now, guys, today we've got a little bit of a different convocation today. It's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be exciting. Tonight, you guys have the opportunity of going over to the La Haye, uh, the La Haye event space, and there's a comedy show going on with Dustin Nickerson and Aaron Weber. Dustin has been on Comedy Central. He's been on Netflix with Kevin Hart. The guy travels everywhere, does an amazing job, and pretty cool. Not only is he going to be over there tonight, but he's also going to be on this stage right now. So let's welcome Dustin Nickerson. Ah, uh, thank you. Thank you. That was overwhelming. Thank you, everybody. How are we? Everybody good? Ah. Uh. Thank you for having me, everybody. My name is Dustin. Uh, yes, I am a comedian, even though I know I look like I was sent here by the city to shut this event down. Yeah, I've got strong narc vibes, I know that. Some kids, they grow up, they want to be Batman, not me, Commissioner Gordon. Commissioner Gordon, this is nice, yeah. Thanks for having me, everybody. I'm so excited to be here. I'm so excited to be, we're telling jokes in front of people. It's been a hard couple. We're all getting through in our different way, though, right? Uh, I took my new hobby uh, here during the pandemic. Uh, I started grinding my teeth. Yeah, any grinders in the house tonight? Nice, yeah. Nice, raise those mouth guards in the air right there. I went into the dentist for a root canal, and he goes, hey, it looks like you've been grinding your teeth. I was like, okay, what's the next move? This wasn't a decision I made. And he goes, well, it's usually caused by stress. Is there anything you can think of in the last year or so that may have increased your stress levels? I was like, I mean, are we doing this for real? <laughs> Everything I read, every conversation I have, every app that I open my phone, every dream that I have, I'm in the middle of a root canal. This is the most relaxed I've been in 18 months. So. You tell me, doc or dent, I don't know what to call you for short, so. <laughs> Stuff though, man, it's, uh, it's been a stressful time for all of us, right? It's been very stressful in my house. I got a very packed house, all right? I'm married, she lives with me. There we go, it's 10 a.m. Let's be honest about what this is, everybody. <laughs> That's good, thank you. Uh, I have three kids, uh, my dad lives with me too. I was raised by a single dad, raised by a single dad. I was raised redneck, anyone else here? Raised redneck, yeah, yeah. I have seen my dad cry two times ever, and both those times involved the Daytona 500. So, yeah, it was him in my house and my Uncle Butch. Whatever you just saw, what I said Uncle Butch, that's him right there. Butch had one son, he named him Tater. That's my family. We're getting through though, you know. I, uh, you know, where, we're at, where I'm at, our schools, the hardest part, you know, I'm a dad, so our schools were closed for 13 months. We did Zoom school with our kids for 13 months. Yeah, when I got the letter from the school district that they were finally going back to in-person school, I recommitted my life to Christ. <laughs> I was like, you put me through a lot, Lord, but I am back, all right? It was hard. The hardest part about Zoom school was just sitting next to your kids and your kids slowly realizing how stupid you were. That's what, like, I have an eighth grade son. There is not one thing that an eighth grader is learning that I know. Not a single thing. He asked me what an integer is, I'm out. I have no idea what an integer is. I got all sweaty. I told him it was the bluish purple color in the rainbow. I don't know. <laughs> Harder one was the first grade girl though. First grade, I know everything that a first grader knows, but I don't know how to teach it to them. That's a different thing. All that, like first grade, that's when you learn how to read. We were three weeks in, I was just looking, I was like, you just might not learn this. You might be one of those can't read kids. I'm sorry. Silver lining, though, for, folks, for all of this is that uh, my favorite form of entertainment uh, is Facebook fights, and guys, it has never been a better time to be alive for Facebook fights. People wake up every day and go, I'm gonna tear apart my family today. I have had too many friends for too long. This ends today. Have you ever guys watched family members fight online? What a gift, an absolute divine. Don't get involved, just enjoy the show. Because they just don't like each other, so it's personal and they have dirt and history. I was watching two cousins debate the vaccine, and it ended with, you know what? I'm glad you didn't get custody of your kids. <laughs> I was like, this is the best movie I've ever seen right here. This is a good show. Like, I'm enjoying this. It's making people more argumentative in person, though. Have you noticed that? People are so confrontational in person, even old friends, all right? So recently I had, I had lunch with a friend who I grew up with, and we haven't seen each other in years, and we sat down and goes, hey, man, what do you think about guns these days? That was his hello. 
I was like, come on, man, you grew up, like, you know me, we grew up together, we had guns around, I just don't really like them, they don't really do anything for me, he got in my face, he goes, hey man, what about to protect your home? I go, buddy, I'm a millennial, I don't own a home, I don't <laughs> Do you think I'm gonna be a hero for my landlord? That's not gonna happen, that's... Been trying to get a new sing from this guy for seven years, that's not in the cards. <laughs> All right, guys, uh, I'm going to be uh, doing a show tonight. Uh, there's a QR code if you guys want, if you're like, hey, I like that, and I would like that in the dark and not at a mandatory church service at 10 a.m. Uh, <laughs> I'll be here tonight if you guys uh, scan the QR code. See you guys. has called you to be extraordinary. Good morning, Liberty. Come on, let's stand and worship together this morning. Will you be my light when I cannot see? And when I can't take another step, Lord, would you carry me? And when I've lost my fight, will you be my strength? Will you set me a table in the presence of my enemies? Come on, let's sing it out this morning. I should not want. I shall not walk. Oh, my soul's got a shepherd in the valley, and I shall not walk. I shall not walk. I shall not walk. Oh, my cup's running over, running over, and I shall not walk. I would lift my eyes where my help comes from. No, I won't be afraid of the shadow because I've seen the sun. No, I will not stop when the way gets harder because the green only grows in the valley and that's where you are. I shall not want. I shall not. Oh, my soul's got a shepherd in the valley, and I shall not want. Yeah. I shall not want. I shall not want. Oh, my cup's running over, running over, and I shall not. in your mercy. Yeah. I got everything that I need. Your goodness in your mercy. Sing, I got goodness and I got mercy. Sing, hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Sing, I got goodness and I got mercy. Sing, I got goodness, yeah. Sing, yeah. 
this life is over, I'm going to live on again. I'm going to trade in my cross for Christ. This is not me. And when you call my name, I will take my rest. There's a mansion in glory in the earth. shout of praise in this place to this morning. Yeah.
the chasm that lay between us, how high the mountain I could not climb in desperation. I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night. Then through the darkness, your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished. The end is written. Jesus Christ, my Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Well, I love you too. Thank you. Thank you. Now, I want to remind you, if you haven't already, to download Dr. Towns' book on prayer and read it as, as quickly as you can. 
Our founder, Dr. Jerry Falwell Sr. said, nothing of eternal significance ever happens apart from prayer. And he was a man of prayer. He started off here at Liberty University with about 150 uh, students. He was a man of prayer. He believed that nothing was impossible for God. And I want you to look around what God has done because our founder believed God wanted something to happen on this mountain. And you know, God wants to use you in a great way. You need to learn how to pray effectively in Dr. Town's book, will help you. Today, I want to recognize one of our departments here at Liberty University. Liberty University. I'll get it out in a minute. They gave me some water, but I didn't drink it. Right. And uh, we have about over 100 that are in our campus security department. And I'd like for those who are leading our department to come out here and join me for a moment. And as they're coming... President of our campus security department is President Ron Sloan. Hello, everyone. We just want to thank you and I want you to know that we only have one purpose here and that our men and women are here to serve God by serving each one of you and keeping this campus safe so that we can support what our founder, our beloved founder, Dr. Jerry Falwell, started, Training Champions for Christ. We want to make sure that we have an environment where you can have fun, you can learn, you can study, and you can develop your skills for what God has called you to do. And I'm honored to work with these fine men and women of our police and security department. Thank you very much. Amen. How long, how long have you been here? Uh, 44 years. 44 years serving the Lord here at Liberty University. This is Chief Hinkley. How long have you been here? <laughs> I've been here 44 years. 44 years. Here's the young man, Major Tinsley. How long have you been here? 14. 14 years. All right. Now, before you hear on the floor are those who work in, on the floor, and uh, then we have some others that uh, up top, and they've been coming down the aisles, and I want you to... Look at each of these campus security people. You know, they put their life on the line every day. How so? Last Tuesday at Bridgewater College, just 70 miles from here, a suspicious person was on the campus, and two of their security officers responded. They were shot, and they were killed. I want you to look at one of these police officers. You know, tomorrow, they could not be here because they faithfully respond to situations here on our campus that may be a threat and maybe is a threat. And I don't want you to ever take them for granted. When you see them as they're working here on campus, I want to encourage you to go up to them and thank them for their service here at Liberty University as they protect you, protect all of us, and are available to help us when we have needs here at Liberty University. This is a great group. We show appreciation, of course, to all of those public officers and serve, that serve across the country, our military who are protecting our freedom, and we ought to show that appreciation to our campus security team here. Join me now in prayer for them, please. Our Heavenly Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. We come into your presence today thanking you for these men and women that you have given us to serve on our campus security team. We thank you, Lord, that you have called them to be here and they've responded. Thank you, Lord, that they've been here many, many years. And Lord, we just pray today that you would put a hedge of protection around about them. Give them discernment when something happens here, maybe a threat. Lord, give them wisdom to perceive maybe a threat even before it happens. And then, Lord, give them wisdom how to handle that threat. 
Protect them as they do. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you for putting your life on the line like these men and women do here and across the country. Lord, that you were willing to go to that cross. You were willing to put your life on the line and you died for us willingly so that our sins could be forgiven, so we could be protected from having to go to that awful place called hell when we die. Thank you, dear Lord Jesus, for putting your life on the line. And then, Lord, we thank you again for these men and women who are willing to put their life on the line day after day, day after day. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Would you give them a big hand of appreciation as they exit today? God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you, buddy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can I say one thing? Uh-huh. Real quick, if I can get everybody's attention, I want to take just one minute to say thank you to President Prevo because I want to, and, amen. Because I believe that God has brought him here for such a time as this. And as of just the last few months and up to date, he is authorized with him and the board of trustees. Thank you, Pastor Jonathan, for your involvement in that as well. Uh, $9 million for cameras, for blue lights, for emergency alerting systems, and all the things to keep this campus safe. So thank you, Dr. Prevo. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you all. Now I want to encourage you to keep praying for these thousands of requests in our prayer boxes. There's requests here for moms and dads to be saved, brothers and sisters, for friends. There are requests here uh, for God's wisdom for your life, what he wants you to do. And as you see these boxes posted throughout the campus, they'll be in a different place each week. I want to encourage you to stop by and pray for these requests. If you have another request that comes up, there'll be some cards on the side. You can fill them out. Now there's a slot that you can put them in so that uh, they're protected and they're in privacy. So I want you to do that. We have another great team here at Liberty University, and that is our Office of Spiritual Development. Amen. And I'll tell you, just as our campus security team is protecting us physically. This team is working hard to protect you spiritually. You see, there's someone out there that wants to destroy you, wants to kill your hope, your plans for your life. And we've, the scripture refers to it as the wiles of the devil. And he's out there to get you. And we have a great team here that wants to protect you from the wiles of the devil by having convos like this, by having prayer meetings, having RAs and all the spiritual things, campus community on Wednesday night. Don't take any of these things for granted because they're designed to keep the devil from destroying your plans and your hopes for the future. Let's welcome uh, our president of our OSD department, Jonathan Falwell. Thank you, buddy. Thank you, Dr. Prevo. Well, today we have a great, great pastor that's going to come and open God's Word to you. He's a pastor of Franklin Avenue Baptist Church down in Nolens. He told me to say it that way, Nolens, Louisiana. I normally say New Orleans, but uh, he told me to make sure I did it that way. But he's been the pastor there for a lot of years, been in ministry since 1977. He found himself in a situation where he got in a motorcycle accident. He calls it his Damascus Road moment, where God instantly, in the midst of tragedy and heartache, changed his life and set him on a trajectory of ministry. And so he's been in ministry all of this time. He's the first uh, African-American president of the Southern Baptist Convention, and he continues to preach the truth of God's Word all across our country. And uh, I love this little thing that, uh, that Fred shared with me. So he's been married since 1980 to his wife. Her name is Elizabeth, but he doesn't call her Elizabeth. He has a special pet name for her, Fred. So why don't you like it? Come on out. In, uh, in the opportunity of like introducing yourself to all of uh, our students here today, what is your nickname for your wife? I call my wife Elizabeth, the love of my life, the apple of my eye, my prime rib, my good thing. There you go. All right. Let's welcome Fred Luter. Good morning, Liberty! 
Will you help me praise the Lord for the music ministry of this place, Brother Kevin and team? What an incredible job they do. Listen, I don't know how the preaching is going to be, but the music has been real good. Amen. And we honor those police officers and the wonderful job that they do. I'm indeed delighted and excited because I have been invited to be here with you on this morning. I want to thank President Provo and I want to thank Dr. Jonathan Falwell for this wonderful privilege and opportunity. I know Dr. Falwell knows a lot of preachers across this city, state, and nation, but I'm so honored that he thought enough of this street preacher from New Orleans, Louisiana. Louisiana. Who that, who that, who that talking about beating them saints to be here on tonight, this morning, and to share in the Word of God. I believe in victorious living. I, I believe that God didn't just save us to give us fire insurance from hell. I believe God saved us so that we can be lights in the dark world and salt in a low sodium saltless society. However, in order for us to pull out and to pull off victorious living, there's some biblical principles that we must practice if we expect to live a victorious life. So with that in mind, turn your Bible to 1 Corinthians chapter 10 as we share this morning in the Word of God. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, very familiar passage of Scripture, verse 13 of that chapter, you'll find these words. No temptation has overtaken you except such as common to man, but God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the temptation will also make the way to escape that you may be able to bear it. Our Father and our God, thank you and praise you for this wonderful and exciting privilege that Pastor, Pastor Falwell has given me to be here this morning, God. Thank you for this exciting convocation, the incredible music ministry, God. Thank you for the energy that's in this place. Now, God, bless this time of preaching. Do as I ask every time I stand to preach. Hide me behind the cross, God. Let them not see Fred. God, let them see Christ. So then, God, that you may be glorified. Saints of God may be edified. Satan may be horrified and lost sinners will come to repentance. We be careful to give your name all the praise, the glory, and the honor. In Jesus' name I pray. And let the people of God say, Amen. They had no temptation taken you, such as common to man. But God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond that which you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape so that you and that you and that you might be able to bear it. With that text in mind, with that scripture in mind, with this opportunity in mind, I want to preach this morning from the subject, how to win more than you lose. How to win more than you lose. Brothers and sisters, I am convinced that every Christian can live a victorious life. I'm convinced that every believer can live a victory. I'm convinced that every born-again person can live a victorious life. I'm convinced that every saved person can live a victorious life. In other words, brothers and sisters, I am convinced, Liberty, that if you truly are Christian, if you are a believer, if you're born again, if you're saved, then I am convinced, I am persuaded, I I am of the belief that as a Christian, as a child of God, that you can win more than you lose uh, as it relates to your Christian life, as it relates to your walk with God, uh, as it relates to letting your light shine uh, in this dark and dingy world that we are living in. Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, I'm amazed that so many of us believe the lies of the enemy. I'm amazed that so many of us believe the lies uh, of the devil. I'm amazed that so many of us believe the false of the enemy, the untruths of the enemy. I'm amazed that so many of us believe the deceitfulness of the enemy when it comes to our Christianity, when it comes to our walk with God, when it comes to letting our light shine in this dark and dingy world. Therefore, ladies and gentlemen, because many of us believe the devil's lie, we continue to mess up. We continue to fall. We continue to stumble. We continue to screw up. We continue to lose more than we lose, even though we know what the Word of God says. Listen, I don't care what the devil says. Uh, the Word of God says, I can do all things through Christ that give me the strength. I don't care what the devil says. The Word of God said, greater is he and you that's in me and you than he that's in the world. I don't care what the devil said. The Bible said, I am more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ 
that loves me. I don't care what the devil said, the word of God said. If God is for us, if God is for us, who in the world can be against us? I don't care what the devil said, the word of God said, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. I don't care what the world said, the word of God said. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. All things now become new. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, whose reporter shall you believe? The devil's lies are of the Word of God. I can't speak for nobody else in here. I can't speak for nobody else, but I choose to believe the Word of God. And because I choose to believe the Word of God, I believe that when it comes uh, to our Christianity, when it comes to our walk with God, when it comes to letting our light shine in this dark and dangerous world, I believe that we can win uh, more than we lose. Can I have about 500 victorious believers to say amen? But in order to win more than you lose, you must have a genuine, authentic, personal relationship with Jehovah God. Let me say that again. In order to win liberty more than you lose, you must have. It's critical. It's crucial. It's imperative that you have a genuine, authentic relationship with God. Not just know about God, not just know of God, but do you know that you know that you know God for yourself? Do you know the God who saved you? Do you know the God who sanctified you? Do you know the God who changed you? Do you know him this morning? Do you know the God that redeemed you? Do you know the God that anointed you? Do you know the God that forgave you? Do you know him this morning? Do you know the God that filled you, that sealed you, that washed you, that justified you, that empowered you? Do you know God like that? But most of all, do you know the God that can keep you if you want to be kept? Oh, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, if you know God like that, I am convinced that when it comes, man, to our Christianity, when it comes, praise team, to our walk with God, when it comes, ladies and gentlemen, to letting our light shine in this dark and dingy world that we're living, brothers and sisters, I am convinced from the crown of my hair to the sole of my feet that we can win more then we lose. And that's the point that the Apostle Paul is making in this text. Paul is trying to convince the believers in the church at Corinth that, listen, y'all can win more than you lose. Y'all can be more victorious in your life. And like man of my brothers and my sisters, my number one priority in today's message, my number one purpose in today's sermon, my number one goal in today's sermon is to convince hundreds of you sitting in this convocation, is to convince hundreds of you that's watching by way of internet, is to convince you that your Christian life does not have to be like a yo-yo, up and down, up and down, up and down. My number one priority this morning is to convince you that your Christian life does not have to be like a roller coaster ride. Up and down, up and down, highs and lows. Uh, my number one priority today, my number one purpose today, my number one goal today is to convince every child of God, every believer that you can win uh, more than you lose. So the question of the hour is, how do we pull it off? How do we make this happen? Well, y'all ask some good questions. I, I like that. I, I, I like being here living it. How can we win as brothers and sisters in Christ, as young believers that want to let our, how can we win more than we lose? Well, our text gives us our answer. Paul said there are three things you must do. If, if you want to win more than you lose, if you want to, be, want to be victorious in your walk with God, there are three things that every last one of us must do. Number one, Paul says, you must have discernment. Number one, if you want to win more than you lose, you must have discernment. Look at the first part of verse 13. The Bible said, the Scripture said, the Word of God said, no temptation has overtaken you except that which is common to man. Discernment means to recognize clearly. To have discernment means to recognize clearly that there is nothing that any of us can do about being tempted. I know you're a proud student of Liberty University, but just because you're at Liberty University, it doesn't mean that you can avoid being tempted. To have discernment means to recognize clearly that temptation will happen to every last one of us. The fact of the matter is none of us are exempt 
from being tempted. It's all throughout the Scripture. Think about it. Adam and Eve were tempted. Cain and Abel were tempted. Moses and Aaron were tempted. Abraham and Sarah was tempted. Noah was tempted. David was tempted. Solomon, the wisest man in the world at the time, was tempted. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego was tempted. Elijah and Elijah was tempted. Samson was tempted. Jacob and Esau, Ruth and Esther, Joshua and Jeremiah, Mary and Joseph was tempted. It's common to every last one of us. Don't mean to offend anybody, but your mama was tempted. My mama was tempted. Your daddy was tempted. My daddy was tempted. It's common. And just to show you, Liberty, how bold the devil is, to show you how brazen the devil is, even Jesus Christ was tempted in Matthew 4 and Luke chapter 4. Yes, my brothers and sisters, temptation is common to every last one of us. There's not a man in this convocation, there's not a woman in this convocation, there's not a student in this convocation who has not been tempted. None of us gets a pass. None of us are off limits. I don't care how long you've been saved. I don't care how long you've been baptized. I don't care how many scriptures you know by memory. None of us gets a pass. None of us are off limits. Satan's job is to tempt us, and homeboy is good at what he does. Satan's job is to tempt us, and he's very good at what he does. However, ladies and gentlemen, I am convinced, again, from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet, that you can have the victory if there is discernment in your life. When it comes to dealing with temptation, again, discernment means to recognize clearly. In other words, if you're going to win, brothers, ladies, if you're going to win more than you lose, you need to be able to discern between looking and lusting. If you're going to win more than you lose, you need to be able to discern between what's right and what's wrong. You may be able to discern between flattery and flirty. There is a difference. You need to discern between what's appropriate and what's inappropriate. There is a difference. You must discern between, here it is, a holy hug and a horny hug. I think some of y'all know what I'm talking about here. Pastor Falwell in, in the church I, where I pastor, in the African-American church, we love the hug. Before this pandemic, man, we hug people every week. We hug them before service, during the fellowship time. We hug people during it. We hug people after service. And live God is my witness. One Sunday, man, John, I went to hug this lady, and she hugged me, and she said, mmm. I said, excuse me? She said, mmm. I said, the devil is a liar. That wasn't a holy hug, that was a horny hug. And ever since then, this is all she gets. That's it, I don't even hug anymore. That's a, you need to make a discernment between a holy hug and a horny hug. Now, I don't care what else I say in this sermon, y'all gonna talk about a holy hug and a horny hug. You need to discern, you need, you need to discern between what's a compliment and what's criticism. You need to discern between what's honesty and what's hypocrisy. Here it is. You need to discern, brothers and sisters, between who's a friend and who's a foe. Everybody that smiles in your face is not your friend. You need to discern between a trial and a temptation. There is a difference. Brothers and sisters, we must have discernment. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, you have to discern about the people that you hang with. You need to have discernment about the people in your inner circle. You need to discern discern about the places that you go to, discernment about who you put, what you put on Facebook, discernment about what you put on Instagram, discernment about what you put on Twitter. You can't put everything on Facebook. You can't put everything on Twitter. You can't put everything on the internet. You need discernment when it comes to what you put on your uh, personal life in and on the internet. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, if you and I intend to win uh, more than we lose there must be discernment in your life. But then the second thing Paul tells us in the text, not only you must have discernment, but then secondly says, you must have devotion. Not only discernment, but brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, you must have devotion. Look at the second part of verse 13. He says, but God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but 
God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. In other words, Liberty, in other words, brothers and sisters, you must have a growing personal relationship with God. Let me say that again. If you're going to win more than you lose, you must have a growing personal relationship with God. Why is that, someone may ask? Well, because the Bible said, the Scripture said, the Word of God said, God is faithful to those believers who are devoted to Him. God is committed to those believers who are devoted to Him. And because God, because of your faithfulness to God, because of your devotion to God, because of your commitment to God, God will not allow the enemy to tempt you beyond what you are able to stand. I need to say that one more time. Because of your faithfulness to God, because of your devotion to God, because of your commitment to God, the Bible said God will not allow the enemy to tempt you beyond what you're able to bear. That's why the text says, but God is faithful. That's why every baptized believer who is devoted to God, that's why every born-again Christian who is devoted to God needs to know that you know that you know Jesus Christ in a personal way. When it comes to, to spiritual warfare in your life, when it comes to spiritual warfare in your marriage, when it comes to spiritual warfare in your family, when it comes to spiritual warfare in your ministry, when it comes to spiritual warfare on your job, when it comes to spiritual warfare, even at school, you need to understand Understand that the battle that you're fighting is not your battle, but because of your devotion to God, the battle is the Lord's. That's why I said, but God is faithful. In other words, like Job, the devil has to come through God to get to you. Like Job, the devil just couldn't pick on Job. He had to get God's permission. And because of your devotion to God, the enemy has to go to God before he can get to you. Brothers and sisters, let me explain. When you think about all the stuff that could have happened to you and me, when you think about all the stuff that should have happened to you and me, when you think about all the stuff that would have happened to you and me, but God was faithful every time. That time you were tempted to commit adultery, but God. That time you were tempted to commit fornication, but God. That time you were tempted to get involved in homosexuality, but God. That time you were tempted to commit suicide, but God. That time you were tempted to join a gang, but God. The lies that could have destroyed your life, the sickness that could have killed you, the meanness that could have wiped you out, the altercations that could have destroyed you, the arguments that could have wiped you out, the confusion that, that, that could have pushed you over the edge, but, but God, but God, but God was faithful to you each and every time. Think about it. Think about it. You had enemies you didn't even know about. Folk were talking about you, you didn't even hear. Dangers were swirling all around you that you could not even see. There were obstacles you couldn't overcome. There were disasters you couldn't discern. But God, but God was God was faithful and saved you from them all. Why? Because of your devotion to God, because of your relationship with God, because of your spiritual growth in God. God led us in every way. God kept us every day. He kept our feet from slipping and kept our lies from falling, and it's all because God was faithful, but God, but God, but God. Ladies and gentlemen, how can we pull it off? How can we win more than we lose? How can we do that some people say can't be done? How can we pull this thing off? How can we win more than we lose? Well, there's one more thing that Paul tells us, Liberty in our text. He says, if you're going to win more than you lose, if you're going to be able to be more victorious in your walk with God, number one, you must have discernment. You must be able to discern between what's right and what's wrong, who's a friend and who's a foe. You got to discern between what's a holy hug and what's a horny hug. You just got to discern that. Number two, you must have devotion. You, you must have a relationship with God. You, you really got to know God for yourself. But then finally, he said, if you're going to win more than you lose. You must have discernment, you must have devotion, and finally, you must have discipline. You must have discipline. The text goes on to say, but with the temptation, also make a way to escape 
that you might be able to bear it. Think about it. You're hundreds of miles, some of you thousands of miles away from your parents, away from the church that you grew up in, away from your youth pastor. Many of you are on your own all the time. You're by yourself. All the time. You're in an environment where the enemy will uh, do all that he can to tempt you. So you must have discipline. If discipline, uh, that, that word discipline means self control, that word discipline means restraint. If discipline is gonna happen in your life and my life, discipline must be preceded by discernment and by devotion. Because discipline without discernment and discipline without devotion can lead to disaster in your life. And that's the problem with many of us. That's the problem with many of us. We're, we're disciplined when it comes to some things, but not disciplined when it comes to other things. We're disciplined when it comes to Sunday worship or convocation. Oh, that's right, y'all don't have any charge about convocation. But, uh, 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 <laughs> but, but, but we're not disciplined when it comes uh, 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 to other things in life. We're devoted uh, 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 to worship, but no devotion to Sunday school or small groups. Uh, we're disciplined when it comes to praise teams and choirs, but no devotion to personal Bible study. We're disciplined when it comes to giving an offering, but no devotion when it comes to tithing. We're disciplined when it comes to your social clubs, your fraternities, your sororities, your gym membership, but no devotion to the ministries of the school or of your church. We're disciplined when it comes to hunting and fishing and golfing and sports team, uh, but do not have the same devotion for the things of God. Ladies, be careful. Brothers, be careful. If you're not careful, your lack of discipline could lead to disaster. Your lack of discipline can lead to bondage. That's why the text says, that's why the Bible says, but with the temptation will also make a way to escape that you and that you and that you and that you and that you might be able to bear it. Listen, this is God's promise to every one of us in this convocation. This is God's promise to every last one of us. But with the temptation will also make a way to escape. That's God's promise to every Christian who wants to win more than you lose. And the promise is, in the midst of your temptation, in the midst of your struggles, in the midst of the opportunities that presented to you, in the midst of your conflict, in the midst of the enemy's attack, in the midst of horny hugs, I'm going to say that one more time, you receive. God says, God says, not the president, not the pastors, not the deans, God says, I will make a way for you to escape. That's a promise from God himself. However, you must discipline yourself to look for the way out and take it. And honestly, that's the problem with many of us. That's the reason that many of us fall. We don't take the way out. God has told us, I'm going to give you a way out. I will not allow the devil to put you against a wall that you have no other option. So God said, when that happens, God said, look, for, I'm going to keep my promise. I'm going to make a way for you to get out of that situation. And that's the problem with many of us who fall. We don't take the way out. Let me give you an example just quickly. Think of the last time you messed up. Come on, shouldn't, shouldn't take that long. Take the last time you messed up. Shouldn't take that long. Now ask yourself, did God give me a way out? Just think about it. Think of the last time you blew it, the last time you did something you should not have done or said something you should not have. Ask yourself the question, did God give me a way out? And if you're born again, if you're saved, if you have a relationship with God, I guarantee you the answer is always yes. Brothers and sisters, it's a proven fact. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a biblical fact that God will keep you. However, you must want to be kept. It's a biblical fact. It's a proven fact that God, in the midst of your temptation that God will keep you, but you must want to be kept. And in order to be kept, there must be discernment in your life. In order to be kept, there must be devotion in your life. In order to be kept, there must be discipline in your life. You can't do it by yourself. 
You can't do it on your own. I know you're a student of the great Liberty University, but you can't do it on your own. You can't do it by yourself. I don't care how many scriptures you know by memory. I don't care how long you've been baptized. I don't care how long you've been saved. You cannot pull this off by yourself. You can't pull this on, off on your own. You are in a spiritual warfare. Some of you every day of your life are in a spiritual battle. However, I am convinced that it's a battle we can win. I'm convinced it's a warfare we can win. I'm convinced it's a battle that you and I can win because it's not about you and it's not about me. It's about the God that lives on the inside of you and you and you and me. Liberty, I can't speak for my, anybody else here. Can't speak for President Jerry. Can't speak for Pastor Jonathan. Can't speak for no one else in this convocation. But I'm at the point in my life I'm at the point in my ministry. Liberty, I want to win more than I lose. I, I want to win more than I lose. I got a congregation looking at me for a role model and an example. I got two grandkids, another one on the way, Kevin, uh, 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 that's looking to their papa for an example and a role model. I got young kids and young brothers in the church where I pastor. I mean, straight out of the hood. But y'all, it's good in the hood. It really is. It's good in the hood who are looking for me as a role. So I'm at the point in my life that I want to win more than I lose. I'm determined this morning to win more than I am made, I have a made up mind that I will win more than I lose. What about you, my brothers? What about you, my sisters? Married couples, what about you? Singles, what about you? College students, what about you? High school students, what about you? Anybody beside me determined to win uh, more than they lose? Anybody with a made-up mind wants to win more than you lose? Well, then let's be committed. Let's be intentional. Let's be resolute. Let's have confidence. Let's be bold. Let's have a made-up mind that we can win uh, more than we lose. And if we win, we must have discernment, we must have devotion, and we must have discipline. Yes, there is no temptation taken you such as common to man, but, but God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you're able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that you might be able to bear it. I don't know, but that sounds like winning to me. That sounds like victory to me. That's why we can shout with confidence, victory is mine. Victory is mine. Victory today is mine. I told Satan, let her get, get, get behind me because victory, victory, victory today is mine. You can have the victory, and you can have the victory, and you can have the victory. You can win more than you lose. Father, we thank you and we praise you for this wonderful and exciting privilege that you've given me to be in this exciting place called Liberty Universe. Thank you for all the students. Thank you for the staff. Thank you for everyone that's took a part of this service. Thank you for this incredible band and praise team. Now, God, I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice, every brother, every sister, every man, every woman, every staff member, every faculty member, I pray that they will be convinced that in spite of the temptations that come into their life, that we can have the victory, and we can win more than we lose. And that's based according to your word. They had no temptation taking you such as common to man. But God is faithful. He will not allow you to be tempted beyond that which you're able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape so that you, and that you and that you might be able to bear it. Give us the victory in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless y'all. I love y'all. Y'all pray for me, and I'll pray for you. God bless you, Kobe. God bless y'all. God bless y'all. Come on, let's stand in response. Let's worship. I cast my mind to Calvary where Jesus bled and died for me. I 
excited about this truth this morning? Come on, I think we can do better than that. Is anybody excited about this truth this morning? That one day our Christ and our Savior is going to return and he's going to take us home where we'll live in glory forever. Come on, can we make some noise in this building? Yeah! Come on, one last time, let's lift it up right here. Oh, praise the name. Come on, sing it out. Sing oh, praise the